<laughs> okay, so so let's try. So good afternoon everyone. My name is Dushwin Pergami. I am working with Simulzit and I am from India. And uh, today's topic is wagering LibreOffice interoperability. So uh, nowadays a uh, lot many companies are using the LibreOffice as their uh, office product. And uh, as you know, uh, Cloudon and along with the Cloudon, Polonra, and Nikaja are also working to improve the interoperability for the labor office. So they are improving the uh, interoperability, but how to measure it? How we can confirm that, confirm that okay, uh, whatever the fix or whatever the improvements they are doing are going on the right path? So at Synergy, uh, we have developed few tools and uh, we have some ideas. Uh, for the uh, next, uh, what you can say, next round of tools, which can by by using which you can measure the uh, the level of interoperability. So let's try. So I am the QA architect at this university. I have around seven years of experience and uh, more than two years of experience with the file format, which is over XML file format. You can reach me on the IRC chat. I as it So basically these are the topics. So basically uh, you can measure the interoperability uh, improvements in what you can say two ways. One is the visual and second one is the non-visual. So visual what you can and under the non-visual there are again uh, what you can say type of comparisons. What you can do is you can do the uh, XML level comparison. The second one is the data level. I mean, whatever the data in my document, which is in the original and the round trip, are uh, preserving perfectly fine or not. So you can measure that. And the last one is okay, we are measuring the uh, interoperability. We uh, we have uh, attended the talks where people are uh, talking about okay, you open the document and save it. But what about the editing? Means I have opened the document, I have edited something, and then I have saved it. Right? I'm not talking about the new document. I'm talking about the, the document which already exists, and on top of it, I made some changes and saved it. <coughs> now you save it back, but you open it. So <coughs> how it is working? We need to do that kind of testing as well. So I am covering that part as well. Okay. So this is the first tool that uh, we have automated. These are basically all the tools are automated tools. Nothing is manual. Uh, this is the uh, basically this is the process, visual comparison process. So here there are three parts. First one is the round trip process. Second one is the image generation, and last one is the comparison. So what we do in the first part. We use the Java Blue APIs and using those APIs what we do is we open the document in the LibreOffice and we simply save it without any modification. Simple, simply save it. After that what we do is we use the uh, Microsoft Improv libraries and using those basically it's a .NET tool which use the uh, Microsoft Improv libraries and using that tool what we do is we open the round trip document convert that document into the XPS format or PDF format. There are two options, XPS or PDF. So you convert your document into the either XPS or PDF and then you convert that XPS or PDF into the images, which is a PNG images. So let's say I have a document which is having the 10 pages. So ultimately you will get the 10 PNG images. And the last one is the comparison part. So I have an original document, I have the round trip document, I have the images for both the documents and I compare the images using the image magic. So basically image magic is a third party library which uh, compares pixel by pixels and gives you a result. So the, the image that you are seeing is a kind of a sample image where the first part is the original image, second one is the round trip and last one is the difference. Which will show, which is generated by the image magic, which will show you the where the differences are in my image. Okay. So, yep, and the red, sorry, for asking, yep, the red color indicates difference. Yes. So 
So it's all different in this case. Yes. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Because because the rotation of yes. the internal images oh, are rotation. Yes. 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 It's lost. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any any question on this part? Mm -hmm. I mean this too. It's it's a nice nice work chain. Yes. It's a good approach. Yes. Yes. Interesting. Uh, if you open the document and then save it, basically, yes. and there is no modification, yes. uh, how can we be sure? That, I mean, the easiest way would be basically for LibreOffice to not touch the document at all. Sorry? Uh, if there is no modification done yes. on the document, yes. then LibreOffice really shouldn't touch the file at all. Uh, so when you open and save, basically, because... Yeah, I mean, ideally there should be no change. But because there is no change, right? Yeah, there is no change, but, but, uh, but there, there are many features, there are many, uh, what you can say, many features which are not supported by LibreOffice okay. and which is supported by the Microsoft Office. As I understand, uh, LibreOffice, yeah. when in opening, it converts from the original mm -hmm. so, so structure to its internal structure and then it dumps the internal yes. structure in the back. So there is a lot of processing, in fact, so even though we do not touch it. So when you open so the uh, docx, what, what you want to have in this in this case is that you know LibreOffice tracks whether any change has been done by the user, and if no change has been done, no modifications done to the file. Everything else is just yes. You know, ideally, dangerous. ideally this should be the case, but it is not like because when you open the OXML file format, right, which is which is not the native format for the LibreOffice, mm -hmm. right? There are kind of two filters. One is the import and export filter, mm -hmm. right? And this particular filters are not kind of uh, well uh, maintained or what you can say not par with the Microsoft Office. So there might be a chances where you can lose some data or some properties. And at the end result, uh, you can see here, which is the original file where my images are kind of been rotated, right? In the round trip image, rotation is gone, right? So this is kind of happen uh, in the uh, while processing your import and export filters. And that's why you, you are getting some kind of changes. So uh, we are working with uh, I mean uh, uh, with the cloud run since uh, what you can say one year, last one year. And uh, we we generally uh, take the master builds and we uh, what you can say analyze the uh, and we have a set of files or let's say what you can say a thousand set of files or say four hundred set of files which is the uh, uh, which is the uh, what you can say the uh, year world files which are not uh, created by us but we have downloaded it from the internet and we run the visual comparison regularly on those four hundred set of files and these are the improvements. So We have a specific criteria. So, as you can see on the left, uh, sorry, okay. uh, right part, we have a kind of a criteria. So, what we are measuring is we are not looking for the hundred percent match. What we are looking for is the at least my file should or my image should match more than or equal to ninety eight percent match in my file. So, that is our first criteria. Second criteria is my first page should match at least or more than equal to 98% match. So there, there are kind of criteria that we are, we are having um, on basis of what we are measuring the uh, interoperability, uh, what you can say, improvements. Excuse me, how do you get the numbers? So, so image matching will give you kind of a major uh, percentage. How, how of overlap? Yes. I mean, so how many, how yeah. many black pixels in one of overlap the black pixels? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And uh, uh, we I observed in a, in a display of one one major problem it's interline spacing. Yes. So if this this is really I think a big problem at least yes. it was a year so, ago I didn't try it for no. one year. So, so so I mean the image magic is not what you can say uh, you rely hundred percent on the image magic, right? 
but it, it can give you a kind of a trending or trend where are you going so as image magic compares the images pixel by pixel so let's say there is a single pixel shift in my round trip image you will get the uh, round result right okay. uh, a year ago I presented here a different measure mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, but not to compare the pixels mm -hmm. but to compute the distance field from the image okay. and compare the distance field okay. and it, it is my opinion is that it is much more robust yes. and it gives Definitely. you uh, really with much better estimate of the of the tick. So 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 right now uh, we are we are working to develop kind of a comparison algorithm using the PNS, but that is not uh, complete yet. So that's why for uh, what you can say intermediate solution we are using image measurement. What is what is the use block here? Yeah. Uh, where where the numbers go to go down? Okay, so basically uh, the blue line, which is a flat line, a total number of files which, are, which we are using as our test base, right? And the, the what you can say, all other lines you are seeing are the uh, number of the files which fits in a particular criteria. Mm -hmm. Right? So let me give you an example of the one of the criteria. Let's say I have a, a document which is adding 10 pages, right? So at, a, at the end of the comparison, my all the pages have the match percent greater than or equal to 19 percent. Right? If it is so, then it fits the first criteria. And the lines you are seeing are plotted for that many files. Mm -hmm. So the first analysis was the file level on the file level this one is the only page level so irrespective of the file we look for the images so let's say I have the 10 files and out of the 10 files I have the 100 images so these are the uh, what you can say criteria which is based on the 100 images not the file we keep file aside and we only uh, take the uh, images only in the consideration Okay, you're generating using the office PDFs. No. no. So we, we save the file in the LibreOffice, okay. we open in the Microsoft Office. Microsoft Office, is Microsoft Office the right PDFs? How yes. do you get your PNGs? So, so we use the intro libraries which is provided by the Microsoft Office. Okay. Right. And we export that particular file, I mean, using that uh, intro library, we open the file and then export as a PDF or experience. Right, now with the PDF, how do you get your PNGs? Would you using your PNGs? Yes, so, so, uh, so Image Magic and the uh, Ghost script are the two. The Ghost script? Yes. Right. So, so generally, my... generally we observe that uh, uh, PDF is not uh, much reliable. Right, that's what I'm And the XPS, XPS is much more reliable, so we use the XPS format. Gotcha. What's, why, why is PDF less reliable than XPS? Because of rendering problems. So, of problems? Rendering problems. Rendering problems. So, Different let's say... People render things in different ways. Really? Yeah. yeah. So and sometimes... And XPS is better because there's only one renderer. Yes. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I mean, we have what, what we have observed is, uh, sometimes what happens, uh, when you export a file into the PDF, yes. some of the background properties or background colors are getting lost, which is not the case with the XPS. And is it, so the export to PDF is, is simply not good enough then? Yes. Okay. So basically you have to tweak your command when you are going to export. You have to pass some of your the parameters while exporting them to the PDF. Then you are, you are good enough. But then also we recommend that you use the XPS format rather than the PDF. Yeah. Do you think that's intentional? That PDF is worse than XPS? Uh, so, uh, no, not sure about what is the wrong with the PDF exactly. Yeah. But we have done kind of a experiment with the XPS and PDF both. Uh, let's say for one week with the same set of files, and the results are much more uh, what you can say positive in terms of the XPS and not in the uh, PDF. 
So what we have done is we have exported as a, as a PDF as well as the PDF. We compare the images, generate the results. We compare these results and we compare the images or what it is a document, not the images, documents manually. Right? And out of this exercise, we, we can say that PDF is not that much good in comparison with text speech. What were you using to render PDF to PNGs? Ghostscript. Yes, Ghostscript. So, the Ghostscript are introducing a number of errors. It is not the problem with PDF, it is the problem with Ghostscript and the number of features that are not available. Yes. Yes. And you use another rendering engine to make it look different again. So, the problem is not PDF, yes. but the rendering engine. Rendering engine. And you don't want to confuse your rendering engine problems with problems in LibreOffice, which are uh, or, or Microsoft Office is important. So those would be getting problem or problem, and you don't know whose problem you're looking at. Yeah. And then you have to load in the reader to check, ah, this is a regular problem here, or this group is not doing it right. Yes. Yeah? Okay. And uh, basically, this is the uh, gross improvement that we have observed since uh, 15th of October 2013 to the 4th March. So initially for the 91 to 100% map, we are having only 165 files and at the end of, in the March, we are having a total number of 20, 25, 21, 25 files. So basically this is the improvements that we have observed. And there are few challenges in the visual comparison process. So, the first one is the writer, let's say we talk about the writer. So, the writer is a free flow document. You can't demarcate that this is my page. Okay, it's a basically application level where you can see, okay, this is my page. But if you can see the XML level, there is no kind of a demarcation of my particular page, right? So, let's say there is a kind of a problem with the uh, section break or the page break. And you do that, let's say my Content shifted to the my next page, right? Consecutively, you will get the false result, or what you can say uh, the wrong result, because image magic is going to compare pixel by pixel, and here my content has shifted down to the next page, which is not the case in the my original document. So this is the uh, problem uh, we are facing. Uh, the spreadsheet, the same problem. My spreadsheet is having, uh, what you can say, work, workbook is having uh, multiple worksheets and you can't, uh, so when you when you print the work, worksheet, it is give you only the image of the printable area. So let's say there is a theme which is outside my printable area, it will give you another image. So there are lot many images and there might be possibility where you have chart or something like that which is shifted a little bit right or left or up and down, you will get a wrong results. As I already talked about image magic, it compares pixel by pixel. So a little shift in my pixel can lead you a kind of a wrong results. Another thing is the rendering technique of your native OS and the version of the NS office as well. So we we, uh, we have observed that when we have updated the Microsoft Office with the service pack, it renders little bit different from earlier one, Microsoft document itself. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about the long document, I'm talking about the original document itself. So, so I imagine when there is a little difference because of the service spec, it, it's not really relevant for your work because it might change with every service spec. Yes, so, so, so to tackle that, that particular issue, what we have done is, uh, we have a monthly cycle to generate the images of the original files. Yes. So every every one month, and during that month, a uh, period of one month, we are not taking or we are not updating our Microsoft Office, mm -hmm. and the, we are not taking the any updates from for the uh, OS as well as the Microsoft Office. Mm -hmm. Right. After that month, we take the updates of the if it is available for the Microsoft Office or the OS as well. And we, we regenerate the images of the original files. Okay. So basically, it's a rebasing the thing. You always work with the latest version. Yes, I think. Oh my god. That's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. 
but it's automated, so it's, it's uh, no, of course, easy. Yeah. Okay, but still. Uh, so how can you ever produce the same document as Office version X does? So, so this whole process is automated, so if you had more test documents, you'd be able to run this with many yes, more. I mean, you can add as many as documents you want. I mean, we have a difference at um, test buckets. One is the 400, which is the real world files. One is for the, we downloaded the files from the Bugzilla. Mm -hmm. And we have our internal, uh, what you can say, work tracking system, which is Jira. So we download the documents, or attachments from the Jira as well. So this, that is a second uh, test bucket. Uh, third one is the uh, synthetic documents. Mm -hmm. So uh, I hope uh, you have uh, attended that Adam's uh, talk where he has uh, talked about the interop matrix. So we created an interop matrix along with the synthetic documents. So synthetic documents are like uh, per feature one document. So we use those documents as well and last one is the 4000 set of documents, which is a real world files. Excuse me, are these uh, synthetic documents available for us to test or uh, are they kept secret by your companies or? So, uh, so Cloudrun is going to release those documents pretty soon, okay. but we are not sure about the dates, but they are going to uh, release those documents along with the metrics. Okay, good. Interesting. Yep. Okay, so this was, this is, I mean, uh, we, we talk about the visual comparison, now let's talk about the non-visual. Non-visual means, uh, what you can say, the XML label or the data label. So the first one is the, the tool that we have developed. We call it as a feature comparison tool. So in this, what we have done is, along with the, uh, the, the improv matrix and synthetic documents, what we have done is we have generated the X paths for each and every feature. Right? So let's say my uh, my document is having a, a text in the bold format. I mean my my text is having a property which is a bold, right? So there is a certain X path which defines okay, there is a document and there is a there is a word which is in the bold, right? So we have we have a kind of a list of the what you can say around uh, uh, two thousand kind of X parts which defines each and every feature or maximum coverage of the features, and we have a CSV or what you can say uh, yeah we have a CSV which ha which is having the uh, this X parts along with the document part. So might be possible that. Header and footer, right? So those are in those are not available in the document or Those are available available in the separate XML, which is a header dot XML or footer dot XML. So we have this X parts along with the document part and other information. And the core engine, which is developed in the Java using the Java technology. So what we have done is we pass this X path as an input along with the original and ground trip files in my engine and what my engine will do is it will check okay there is a one document it took uh, documents one by one and scans for all those 2000 x parts in my particular document and uh, what you can say it gives us a list like okay this particular document is having this feature this feature this feature this feature same for the object document it will do the same and at the end of the scanning of all these documents, what we do is we compare these results. Right? So let's say in my original document I have the images and let's say I have the 10 images, right? So I'll get a result okay, 10 images in the my original document. In round trip, let's say I got the 9 images only. Right? And we compare it and we can see okay there is something uh, happening wrong in this particular document for this particular feature. So at the end we will get the kind of a CSP result which defines okay which feature is, I mean, 
working almost perfectly fine and which feature it is uh, working not at all. So, any question on this? For which features do you, do you find are the hardest or uh, work very flaky or you don't you know don't work like you want them to? So, so earlier there was a kind of a smart art which was not uh, a kind of so a smart art is getting converted into the images, mm -hmm. right? So that kind of uh, features we are uh, getting the zero. So we talked about the comparison at the XML level, right? Now let's talk about the data level, right? So first one is the writer comparison engine, right? What what here we are doing is we have so we have used the uh, Microsoft InDrop libraries for this to develop this particular tool, right? Here what we are doing is we are passing original as well as the rounded uh, files to this particular tool and using the improv libraries what we are fetching is the this this many information how many pages are there in the my original and the rounded document how many words characters with or without spaces paragraphs and lines so we we take all this information for each and every file original as well as the rounded file and we compare this what you can say this information and at the end of the uh, process we get a CSV file which is having a result okay this document is having I mean it's losing kind of a data in terms of the characters or words so we can know that okay counter document is losing some data in some cases any question on this? What about uh, paragraphs and tables uh, or text frames or something like that? So uh, it will give you the, all the characters, whether it's in the uh, what you can say table or not in the table. So by characters or number of the characters, you can confirm that okay, my number of characters are not uh, what you can say. If it's reducing, then you have to you will check it where, where is the problem. Or what you can do is this non-visual and the visual comparison tools that go in the parallel, right? If you see that there is a text data loss, what you can do is you can take the images, which is the difference images, right, and see okay where the difference is, and you can uh, what you can easily know what what part of data is missing in the round file. Okay. Okay, so we have developed the tool for the writer, but uh, we are in process, process to develop a tool for our audience engine for the calc and impress. But this is kind of a thought that we are having right now. So for calc and uh, impress, what you can do is you can use either Microsoft Intro libraries or Apache UI. Both are supporting docx files or sorry OXML format, right? And I mean, you are having a Java expertise, then you can use the Apache UI and have a .NET expertise. You can uh, always use the uh, Microsoft Intro library. So there are two options basically, right? So using uh, any of this particular uh, tool or what you can say libraries, what you can extract from the uh, sheet or what you can say uh, calc, the cell values or the cell formulas or functions, pivot tables, chart, images, anything that you want to extract and you can compare this data. So that this is kind of a data label. So uh, I mean uh, you can what you can see you can scan from first cell to last cell, last available cell. You can create kind of a map which is having the my cell uh, what you can say number and the its value from the original file. Same like for the computer file, and you compare these two, and you will get to know okay if you are losing any kind of a data or not.
सेम लाइक द इंप्रेस एज वेल सो इन इन कैल्क यू यू डू और यू फैच द डेटा शीट वाइज इन द इंप्रेस व्हाट यू कैन डू इज यू कैन फैच द डेटा स्लाइड वाइज एंड यू कैन गेट द प्लेन टैक्स शेप चार्ट्स मास्टर लेआउट्स एज वेल एंड यू कंपेयर दिस डेटा so any question for this two tools okay so these are the few of the challenges that we we are right now facing in the non visual comparison first is the feature comparison tool so feature comparison tool will give you the results okay my document is having 10 images but it won't be able to give you the exact position of the images right so let's say there is a image in my table and after round trip my image has been shifted out of the table then feature comparison tool is not i mean uh, is not able to give you like this kind of things okay your image has been moved out of the table so here what you can uh, uh, measure is whatever number of features are there in the round trip file are same in the round trip file or not this is the thing writer comparison so the major problem is let's say in the round trip process somehow uh, the document uh, gets some white spaces or the section breaks or page breaks right so this will give a false result because you are getting a character with space and without space number of the paragraphs number of the lines so due to that particular white space might be possible that your number of the lines are getting got increased or uh, your character with space or without space are not matching so this is the uh, thing that uh, that is challenge right at uh, the problem with the cal and impress and engine that we are right now uh, what you can say keep, keep in mind is let's say my chart or my sheet is having a uh, sheet is having a chart on the page right at certain position let's say it start from 0 0 first cell but in round trip it shifted <coughs> somewhere in the right or say in, in the down so this particular tool will not tell you okay your image has been shifted so it just look for the image in a particular sheet or a, or what is the work sheet image or chart so you can't make sure that okay whatever position was my chart in the original image is the same in the round trip or not so same like the impress engine uh, we are facing we we uh, we have in mind like this kind of problems we can face okay so we talked about the uh, uh, what you can say the non visual comparison and visual comparison where we are not making any kind of modification in my document we simply open the document and save it that's it right but we should check like after improving a particular feature or particular area let's say we user opens the document in libre office make some edit and save it back and now he takes that document in the microsoft office or some other format how my document is being so we we call uh, this as a uh, what you can say dirty testing where we are making a document dirty so what we so this is a uh, uh, we we have done kind of poc for this particular tool so what we have done is we we have recorded a macro in the pre office so let's say we enable the macro and we record a macro to insert the table or image header or footer so different kind of macros we have recorded right we give this macro uh, in place and now what we do is we use the java mo engine of the libre office we open the document and we execute one of the macro on a open document so let's say either it or i mean it will insert a header or it will insert a footer or it will insert a image or table or something like that so by doing this we are making a document dirty right we we are not sure let's say on the first page or the second page or third page what is the content right now there 
and what we are uh, uh, inserting. I mean, we are inserting an image or a table or anything, right? We are not sure what is the combination right now. We save that document. So now my document is a directory document and the editing, right? And we have another tool which will uh, uh, develop using the improv libraries, right? What what this this tool will do is it will try to open the document which is the edited document in the uh, Microsoft Office, and it will see okay my this particular tool or Microsoft Office is able to open the document successfully or not, right? If it is able to open the document successfully. We try to export it as XPS, right? So here, what we are checking is okay. The edited document of whatever of whatever edition we have made in my document are what you can say compatible to export as XPS or not. So let's say my Microsoft Office is not able to open the document, the edited document. We say it's simply it's a corruption, right? Something is bad happened. Due to which my document is not able to open. If uh, my document is able to, my Microsoft Office is able to open the documents, but it is not able to, uh, what you can say, export, right? We can say it's a crash. I mean, we are not able to generate the images, and ultimately we are not able to compare the images. So something is bad happened while editing, and. So basically, this tool will tell us okay what is a uh, crash and corruption kind of things which is happened by the uh, editing. Uh, we have another thought in our mind. What we uh, what we do? Let's say we have already document which are edited, right? We know okay this is the crash and corruption, but what about the visual comparison? How they are looking. I mean, let's say if you talk, if you want to check the similarity or the rendering part of this edited document, how we can do. So, uh, what we the thought is the macro that we have recorded in the LibreOffice, the same macro we record in the Microsoft Office as well. While editing the original document in the LibreOffice, what we do is we over, we edit the original document in the Microsoft Office as well and save it aside. So that my original document is not getting hampered, and at the end of the uh, what I can say process, we can take these two sets, put it or what is the feed into the visual comparison part, and take out the results. Okay, any question? Okay, so I have a demo for the visual comparison engine. So let me show you. Here what we do is we say we call it as a round trip. So we uh, use that Java Mono API and open the each and every document in the LibreOffice and save it. So that has been done. 
done and in the round trip folder now you can see okay all the round trip files are saved. Now the next part is to generate the images out of this round trip files. So here we are uh, converting the dockets into the XPS. Hmm. So basically we have a threshold of the uh, for 3 minutes. So let's say my particular document should open and export as a XPS and generate uh, the generate images within a 3 minute. If it is not, then we call that document as a crash document. Right, so, PHs are getting generated for a particular document. And here also what we are doing is, uh, we are uh, using a 10 documents at parallel, I mean we generate the images for 10 documents in parallel. And let's say a particular document is not able to export or images have not have been generated for a particular document. So we take the name of that particular document. and. At the end of the all the documents have been processed, we rerun we rerun this kind of document once again. <coughs> so basically, it's a second pass. If my particular document is not able to uh, generate the image in the second pass, we say it's a, uh, there is a problem with that particular document. <coughs> right. So these are the images for our document. Right. So as you can see, there are only four documents. Originally, we are having the five documents, but one document is missing. Right. So we have two kind of folders. One is the corrupt files. So let's say Microsoft Office is not able to open the files. So those are corrupt files, and the one is the uh, what you can say. If we try, Microsoft Office is over, able to open the file, but is not able to export as XPS, right? So we call that file as invalid file. So this particular file is not able to export it as a XPS. So that's why it is in the invalid folder, right? So this is the uh, second part, which is done. Now the uh, the time to compare the original as well as the rounded images. And to run the criteria. So whatever criteria we are having, we so here what we are doing is we compare the images, right? And we are having the CSV file which is having the number of I mean for total percentage match percentage for each and every page of files. Okay. So this is the okay. So for file number three. I have total 3 pages and the match percent of my page one is 87, second is 87 and third one is the 99. Right? So <coughs> we, we run our criteria on this particular CSV. So these are the basically the uh, match percent for each and every page. Here is the difference I mean, between the original as well as the uh, round trip file. So this is my overlay image for original as well as the round trip file. Right. This is the diff images. We are also generating the merge images, which is similarly like in the first line. So this is the difference. 
I mean, in the original image, I have got not that hand with the pen uh, icon, but in the round trip file, I am having my, I mean, the frame is shifted, uh, I mean, got shifted on top, slide above. So this is the difference between my original as well as the round trip file. Thank you. 